Hello everyone, David here. Recently, I've become slightly obsessed with this, time-sliced photography. It's where you capture a series of images over a long period of time, and typically capture some kind of cool transition, like from day into night. And then you chop up all of those images into slices, and then put them back together so that you see the transition in a single image. The short version of how to do this is to get a camera with some kind of time-lapse functionality. Uh, the new Sony cameras have this built in. And then get it on a really stable tripod so that it doesn't move in between shots and start capturing images. I recommend taking a photo about every 30 seconds over the course of an hour. That way you'll have lots to choose from. And then take those images home and put them through some kind of image editing software like Adobe Lightroom, Luminar 4 or Capture One. Get them looking the way you want and then put them through another piece of software that will chop them up into slices and composite the final image. I used some software I found on GitHub called Time Slicer and I made some adjustments and you're very welcome to use my version of that if you want. Alternatively, you can composite it yourself in Photoshop or After Effects um, or you can actually buy software that will do the slicing for you as well. After it's sliced and put back together, you can do some extra editing just to kind of make the image pop that little bit more and then your final image is ready. That's the short version. If you want to see the long version where I sort of discovered all of this, keep watching. Let's go. Okay, I'm now here in uh, Trafalgar Square. Um, I'm going to do a time-lapse shoot. Um, just looking at uh, Horatio Nelson's backside, hopefully with uh, some other known London landmarks behind him. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can get some useful photos out of this. Okay, I finished the time lapse. Unfortunately, the wind did throw the tripod around a fair bit, um, so we might have to stabilize it in DaVinci Resolve. Um, hopefully, that'll be possible. Um, but the setting is just absolutely beautiful, so um, hopefully, I'll be able to show you the fruit of my labor now. Okay, I'm going to try another time lapse today. I'm just going over Lambeth Bridge, heading towards. Uh, Big Ben and the London Eye and I'm actually going to set up opposite Big Ben. It's somewhat of a cliche spot for photographers and I'm going to take the lessons that I learnt from the last shoot. So I've got uh, my big beefy tripod and uh, I've also got my full frame Sony a7 III with me as well. So should be able to set up, get a nice stable time lapse this time and hopefully a good end result. If you're wondering about the camera settings I'm using, I've got it set to aperture priority and actually at the smallest aperture the lens will manage at f22 and that's because I want a really nice sparkly look from all the lights as they come on as it gets a bit darker. But it means that the shutter speed is being managed automatically and the ISO as well. So hopefully it should uh, deal with the exposure as it gets darker, it will compensate for that. Um, and of course I've got the lens set to manual focus as well because you don't want any kind of autofocus focus hunting going on between photos and your time lapse. It's just a shame really that the scaffolding is covering up Big Ben entirely because I'd really like to be able to see that clock face. There's actually a very interesting setting hidden away in the Sony menus that's called minimum shutter speed while ISO auto and it was set to standard before and I've actually just changed it to the slowest allowed setting and it kind of is the bias towards how much it will ramp up the ISO instead of lowering the shutter speed. And I actually want that kind of long exposure look, so I've now allowed it to use really slow exposure times. Um, but that's worth changing if you want to actually um, allow the ISO to just stay at 100 and then use really long exposure times instead. Okay, so I've finished my time slice photo of Big Ben and I'll show you what it looks like here. I think it looks all right, but I've got my sights set on the next biggest target, which is here, the London Eye and the County Hall. And because it is lit up like this in sort of like bright neon at this time of night, I think it's gonna make an excellent candidate for a time lapse and a time slice photo. So. That's the next goal. Okay, well, third time's a charm. This is the third time lapse, and it's also the third time I'm trying to do this. Uh, 
Being Britain, we have a sort of ubiquitous threat of rain, and uh, the first two times I tried to shoot this time lapse, um, it was just the heavens opened. Uh, so I'm heading back to uh, my view of the London Eye and the County Hall, and I'm going to get set up, and hopefully we'll get some good shots this time. Before you plan your time lapse, it's a good idea to go on to uh, some sort of good, reliable weather source app. Um, BBC Weather is good in the UK. Um, and also there's a great app for planning photography called Photo Pips. You can even set a point and it will show you the direction towards where the sun is going to set or the moon is going to rise, for example. OK, I'm now installed. I think this is a pretty good midpoint between the end of the London Eye and the County Hall. Um, now we just have to wait and hope the rain doesn't get any worse. Okay, so the time lapse is all completed. I've got all of my images. I think they look pretty cool. Um, I now want to do a bit of image processing on them. Um, but before that, I want to pick the ones I'm going to use for my time slice. So I'm going to uh, have a look through all of my images. I captured RAWs, um, but I'm gonna look at the JPEGs first. Um, and first of all, I'm just gonna drag them all into Time Slicer and see what that looks like. So yeah, using every single image actually looks a bit messy. I mean, it's kind of cool because you see this transition from, well, moody day into night. But I think I want to use fewer images and then you get a more obvious distinction between the different slices. Okay, I do think that's pretty cool as well. Um, you get this weird effect down here where the um, Westminster Pier was actually rising up. So uh, over the course of the uh, Time lapse, you actually see the pier go up as well, which is <laughs> kind of an unexpected feature. So, this is using 15 slices, and you get a more obvious gradation from that uh, moody sky to nighttime, and you see the lights come on. Um, I think I slightly prefer this effect. Let's try it with the radial slices as well. That's pretty cool. I want to try it radial from the top, so I'm going to tweak some settings. Okay, and I quite like this effect because it's going clockwise round as time progresses, which kind of feels natural because that's the way a clock moves. Um, and you can see the payoff at the end, which is the London Eye lit up, and you see the county hall slowly becoming lit. So what I'm actually going to do is put these images through Luminar 4 because it has some great AI accenting options and it can enhance the sky as well. So even though it looks a bit kind of moody and miserable at the moment, I think Luminar 4 will really sort of help it pop a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is actually crop the image at the top. So um, we'll get rid of this kind of wasted sky because it doesn't look that great. But we'll also get an effect where the slices will appear sort of like the edge of a fan rather than all going to the centre of the fan. Okay, so these are my 15 images. Let's get to work and make them look pretty. Some of them look pretty nice already, um, but these ones at the start of the time lapse are just very like dull and gray. So let's see what we can do with those. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just try increasing the exposure to make them a bit brighter. Um, and then I really like the AI accent feature in Luminar 4. Let's crank it all the way up. It is something like vibrance in other applications. And the Sky Enhancer really helps add some detail to the sky, which is going to be useful because this whole portion of the image is basically just sky. We can see some uh, spots on the lens, which were actually raindrops. Um, in some cases, I'm going to try and edit them out. And in other cases, where they overlap with too much detail, I'll just pretend it's art and I meant to do that all along. I'm going to add this golden hour setting because it just makes it look a bit more happy at the start. So I want a happy daytime into a cool nighttime, I think, to give me the most impressive looking image. Okay, I'm quite happy with this one. Let's export this. I'll see if I can take my settings over to the next image. Otherwise, I'll work on them individually. So as you can see from the before and after, the adjustments I've made with Luminar 4 really sort of bring it to life. You get this sort of quite murky looking photo on one side, going to this very vibrant looking one over here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this set now. 
uh, I'm going to export them all from Luminar, and then I'll need to put them through Capture One as well, just to adjust the cropping and rotation on every image, and then they're ready for slicing. Okay, so it's all exported and sliced, and I've done some extra processing just to give the image a vignette and some other HDR effects, and the final image is available here. Okay, what do you think? Do you like the effect? Do you think you'll use time slice photography? I think it looks very cool, but it does require a lot of work to go into every image. You have to stand around for a couple of hours or more recording the time lapse. Um, then you have to process each image and then slice them, which requires an understanding of the software or painstakingly compositing them yourself. So I'm not sure how many more I'll do, but it's cool to have it as a trick up my sleeve. If you make any time sliced photos, I'd love to see them. So somehow provide a link in the comments and I'll check them out. Okay, that's my video. I hope it was useful. If so, then leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.